Hello chess fans! In today's video, I want to show you a tricky gambit that Dubov invented two years ago, and I'm going to show you two sort of modern games that illustrate why this gambit is still dangerous. So I think that this gambit, if the reason it's a good idea is because many people have forgotten about it. Two years ago in 2021, it was really popular because Dubov played it for the first time, but these days I don't think anyone knows it, and I think you can get some really quick wins. So at first, I'm going to look at a game between Alan Picot and Timur Gureyev. So the game started with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. Now, we're going to see you can also get it from this move order after takes uh, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, knight f6. We've sort of transposed. Okay, so bishop c4, bishop c5 here, uh, d4. And also, I wanted to point out one thing, that in this specific move order, there's a reason that black can't go for here and see, take a few seconds to see if you can find it. It's not particularly difficult, but it's definitely a good tactic to know that if you're going to play this gambit. So the idea is not queen d5 because after it looks like you're sort of winning this, but then they have queen e7 defending both. So you have to be careful. Invert your move order. Bishop takes f7 here. Check. King f8. Check. d6 here. And here white should be more or less completely winning because of the fact that, okay, black's king is horrible. White has control of the center and white has some easy development here and easily castling here so yeah white should be winning here so instead of that uh after takes they don't take here and here we're going to see the start of the gambit so the gambit goes with this excellent move b4 so it's really borrowing ideas from the evans gambit which is often often said to be like one of the best gambits and the idea is okay we're attacking the bishop and we want to go for e5 and we also want to go for this b5 move so here black has two moves they have bishop b7 or they have uh Bishop b6, both of these are sort of playable and they're both honestly fine options. But in this game, we're going to look at bishop b6 and the next game, we're looking, going to look at bishop e 7 So here, the move that was decided to be played is move e5. And the idea is we have to prove some sort of compensation for the fact that uh, we're down a pawn. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get space in exchange for the pawn. And often space can lead to an attack. So here, black decided to go for d5. Now, uh, before I sort of go any further, we have to explain why black played d5. So in this position, e5 is one of the main lines. And after d5 here, uh, takes, 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 is not a very good idea because black has this sort of idea of d3 and this black has this huge center and white has some sort of badly developed pieces. So this is not a very good idea. And so after d5, most white players will go here and the main line continues with knight e4. So this is sort of the reason why they go for d5 because of the fact that, okay, we need to get a claim in the center too. We don't want to be down so much space. So that's why after b4, he decided to go for d5. Now here, d5 is not as great, but uh, yeah, here another move that you can play is knight e4, and this is not possible in the other line because of uh, tactics, I think, with like bishop d5 and c takes d4. But here, I think knight e4 might be the best move, but it's also incredibly tricky. For example, here, white can just castle. And for example, if they play takes here, you have queen d5 with this fork on these two squares. So this is why this is an incredibly important tactic to remember. And here, you don't even have to sacrifice the bishop because of the fact that they have no way to defend this and this at the same time. So instead of that, what black might do is they might castle. They might be like, okay, let's castle our king. Here you can go for b5 and let's say knight, uh, let's say black is just like, okay, let's attack the bishop, get the bishop out of here. Here you can go for this move, bishop d5, attacking the knight and okay, where does the knight go? Like it has nowhere to go, so it has to take here. And after it takes, takes, you're going to go for this move, knight g5. And you might say, okay, what's the purpose of knight g5? Like, okay, we're putting some pressure here. Uh, what if black just kicks me away? We sacrifice the knight. So this is why this gambit is incredibly fun. Takes, takes. And after queen e8, because they can't go f6 because they're pinned. So they go queen e8 and you might like, okay, what's the idea? I don't see it. Do we just develop pieces? Maybe you try to rook lift or something. Yeah, rook lift is also uh, winning. But here, this is crazy move. Bishop f6. Like, oh, my headphones fell off because of how crazy that move is. It's just like, what is bishop f6? This is such a, it's just so cool to me. And this is the type of thing that you see in this gambit, which is why knight e4 is sort of maybe a good move, but it's just really difficult to play for humans. So here, instead of that, uh, black went for d5, which I think is a more natural move. Here, after takes, d takes here. Here, you have to go for queen e2, and the idea is uh, we're sort of trying to misplace the king. For example, if they play uh, king f8, here you can go b5, knight a5, and queen e5 threatening here. And for example, if they take, you have bishop h6 here and checkmate. So they can't take, and if they take, and if they take for the with the queen, for example, uh, maybe simple enough, you have check here and then checkmate. So yeah, they can't really take the pawn, and okay, uh, otherwise they're just going to lose this. So they have to go for like g6, check, and then okay, you're completely winning. So no one will go king f8. So everyone will pretty much go for this move, uh, bishop uh, e6. And here you're going to go for b5, attacking the knight. And here in the game, they decide to play for knight a5, which I think is sort of the most natural move. Now here, I just wanted to mention, if you are a black player and you your opponent plays this, 
I just want to mention a really funny line with Night B4. It's like absolutely ridiculous. Like no human would willingly play this if they didn't know the line before. I don't think, I don't even think super GMs would play this if they didn't know this line. And the idea is after takes take, you're just going to be like, yeah, I'm down a piece, but I have the bishop pair and I have these past pawns. Like, okay. Yeah, humans just simply would not play like this, and this, I think, is a little bit of a ridiculous way to play, but honestly, I assume that black should be winning the game like 90% of the time here. It looks so absolutely fun for black. So yeah, if you're a black player, go for knight b4, and if you're a white player, it's not the biggest deal in the world because the position is equal, but okay, here. Here, knight a5 was instead of played, and here we're going to go for this move, f takes g7 after rook g8. The position is incredibly complex, and the engine claims it's equal i'm not really convinced i think that it's probably slightly better for black but it's almost near impossible to play for black so here you can go for this move c takes d4 and in the game uh, rook takes g7 was played uh really black doesn't really have any more natural options black could also try to accelerate the queen side castling and after here go for queen size castles immediately but then we can immediately defend our pawn so it's a sort of give and take here from black so they decide to go for this move uh, rook takes g7 and after castles, they went for queen f6, looking to uh, castle queenside. And here, white played like a really nice move, which is this move d5, sort of attacking the pinned piece and also preparing this move bishop b2. And black was just like, oh wait, didn't you just hang your rook? And then here, bishop b2 was playing, and then black was like, oh, you didn't hang your rook. But okay, no, black didn't actually say that, but yeah, sort of that's the idea. We're going to go on queen a2, we have knight c3, we're picking up the exchange, and white is way too active here. So here, queen takes a2 was played. D takes c6, picking up the pawn, castles, and here knight c3 attacking the queen, and the queen really doesn't really have a lot of squares. After queen e4, uh, sorry, queen b3, we go knight e4. Now here, maybe it was uh, more advisable to go for this move rook d1 with the idea that if he takes, we're going to take with the knight, attacking the rook, and after here, here we have queen e8 coming, and there's no way to really defend this. So this might have been better. But instead, knight e4, I think, is also a natural move. And here, the best move for black is, like, really, really weird. It's c3. I'm not even sure I understand the idea of this, and then to go here, uh, sorry, not there, to go here, and yeah, I'm not really, in sh I understand the idea of here, I think it's to go queen c4 in some positions, but here instead, rook g6 was played, and after e7, rook e8, knight f6, attacking the rook, here he has to sort of sacrifice the exchange, and here, okay, white is already completely winning, but then it becomes even easier, after here, rook d1 turning rook d8 it's just game over and so that's how a super gm was defeated in just 20 moves by this gambit so this is an incredibly tricky opening and yeah players can lose very quickly so yeah really what went wrong here white just kept really really active and white sort of kept the position chaotic and was able to win so next i want to look at this other game between uh christopher Wu and dennis lazovic so this was played like a long time ago actually i think this was played yeah two years ago so uh christopher Wu, i think is a player to follow if you like gambits because he often plays these like sort of weird gambits as both white and black that i think are just really cool and he does it at a very high level so he's like 2600 something and he's playing these these gambits that are people think are not that good so i think like even at the super gm level like not all these super gms know these sort of gambits so like what's the chance that your opponent is going to know the gambit uh, unless you're playing a super gm which and then okay even they probably won't know it so here again we saw this move order with b4 now this is also playable but here uh dennis decided to go for bishop b7 and bishop b7 is sort of more solid and i think it's more simple of an approach bishop the idea of keeping the bishop on e7 is you always prevent this knight g5 tactic and yeah that can be really useful in a lot of positions so here again we're going to go for e4 and here they can't go d5 because after takes we're attacking the bishop so there's no there's no or wait there is a d5 takes and and okay they have to just go down a piece again the engine always says sacrifice the piece sacrifice the piece is black this is not something any human is going to do so uh knight e4 we go b5 attacking the knight knight a5 and here we go bishop d3 attacking the knight again and in this in this position yeah black is probably going to take here now if black takes here it's not actually so clear cut that oh we have this clear win like we do in other positions but it's more so white has a lot of compensation white can sort of get their pieces in the attack do something like this after h6 go bishop uh, after g6 defending the pawn go bishop h6 it's difficult for black to castle and it's a pretty nice position for white Maybe here instead of queen g4, because queen g4 allows d6 in many positions, go castles, and after bishop b7, go queen g4. And now there's no sort of d5 or d6 because of the fact that the queen's not attacked. So yeah, black sort of, white just sort of gets full compensation with their active pieces there. This knight is not playing in the game. And if you like sort of attacking style chess, immediately attacking your opponent, I definitely recommend this line. 
Um, I think it's important to note for a player that might be scared to play this gambit because, okay, some positions, it's not really clear cut. I would say for one, playing with the initiative, especially at an amateur level, is almost game winning because of the fact that if your opponent has to respond to you, it's 10 times more likely your opponent is going to make a mistake than you. All you have to do as an attacking side is just develop your pieces, go near the king, and your opponent will freak out. Your opponent will play moves like G5, like H5, like move their king some someplace that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, don't be afraid. Remember, the initiative is always going to carry you, especially at the amateur level. So here d5 was played and here after c takes d4 we see sort of the opening phase of the game like sort of the gambit phase all these tricky lines come to an end what's happened here is we've gotten a simple position where okay white has more space but white has played this b5 move which is sort of weird why has white played this b5 move but as you can see this can definitely be used as a tool because we essentially got b4 b5 for free so here castles we saw castles bishop f5 a natural developing move and we see queen c2 sort of putting pressure on the position and here dennis decided to go for a rook c8 and the idea of rook c8 is okay i'm going to use the fact that you played b5 against you i want to open the c file because you made it really easy i can just go c6 and open the c file but this already maybe is a step in the wrong direction because of the fact that here we have this nice move knight c3 and it's already becoming difficult for black to sort of prove what to do. For example, if black takes here, we have takes here, and then, okay, immediately we're threatening here, and we win a pawn. So black can't exchange. So, okay, what is black to do? So let's say they go for their plan with c5. Okay, we're wanting to open up. You can all pass on me, but that won't be good. So here we take on e4, and if they took here, we're just going to go queen b1, and we're, I think we're going to transpose to something similar in the game. Yeah, okay, so we just transpose the exact same thing in the game. And here after takes takes, we can see the dust is sort of cleared a little bit. White does have this pawn on b5, but the position is nice for white. This pawn on d4 is weaker than the pawn on e5 and the pawn on b5. And it's going to be difficult for black to defend, especially with this knight being so offside. So here queen d7 was played. And here I'm really not sure why uh, white didn't just take this. I think white black white was maybe scared of this move. Uh, rook c4, but then here I think you can have here and after takes here, something like this and white should just be up a pawn maybe white missed this move queen h7 but okay that might be something that uh, would have been an improvement and here white's up a pawn but it's not so clear cut but the idea of knight f5 is definitely strong so i'm not saying i would have played knight d4 i'm just saying that knight d4 was the better move uh so here bishop g5 was played it sort of uh makes sense because the fact that you want to go knight g5 but this bishop is preventing preventing you that was black's whole idea with going bishop e 7 to prevent this knight g5 tactic so here rook c5 sort of attacking both pawns and a4 was played here again maybe we should have just taken taken and uh either defended this pawn or even taken here with the queen or the knight so instead a4 was played and that sort of allows this sort of really unnatural defense and then if takes you win the knight so this is something I think that's really uncommon. So I think this is why both players probably missed this f5 move. It's incredibly weird. After Ambassador, the rook move opens up. That's just ex extremely weird. So here instead, I think black did the natural thing. I want to get my knight into the game, but black simply missed the fact that after, oh, sorry, after rook d1, there's no way to defend the d4 pawn. The d4 pawn is falling and there's nothing black can do about it. So after here, we saw queen takes b7 now even the b7 pawn is falling and after takes takes queen takes e5 takes takes we saw okay the d4 pawn also fell so here white finally uh gets into the end game and they're simply just up a pawn and now we're going to see some nice conversion by christopher Yu. so for, uh first gets the king safe creates some loaf next activates the rooks knight d2 trades the pieces and the reason why this is winning is because we have the rook being able to get behind these past pawns. And for example, if the rook was down here and this rook was over here, I mean, it's almost near impossible to win. But with this rook being nicely placed on t2, it's sort of easy to win. And here, uh, white just completes their plan of just pushing the pawns. And then now they play this nice move h4. And the idea is we have to break up the structure. And h6 is really not possible here because of rook takes h6. So for example, if the rook was instead like on d3 and they could go f5 and h4 could be met by h6 okay it's not actually so convincing anymore if we do this it might be harder and harder to win because of the fact okay we're trading pawns but also their structure is still intact our king can't easily approach it so instead of that this nice move uh, rook b6 was played and after here the win for this grandmasters at this level is sort of simple and yeah this position also might not be winning if the king's on g8 it's 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 really hard i think it's a draw but it's like it's not really clear how to win this but with the king cut off as long as you keep the king not able to approach the the win is quite easy and yeah you just push the pawn get the king behind the pass pawn and then 
this is a classic uh, Lucy in a position or rook lift position where the king is going to come out after the checks go here and then block. So you can see that happened. And okay, he did that. Uh, I think, yeah, this is also a way to win. But in case they give another check, you could go here, check, and then here. And this is the classic way to win the position. The king's too far. The rook has to, uh, can't defend the square and it's game over. So yeah. That's a secret weapon of Dubov that I think is really underrated and I think that you could definitely check out. If you like this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.